different questions I did on Saturday, but um, going back and looking at it, it looks like you guys really had some trouble blocking offensive line, tight end, running back. How do you, how do you get around that? Well, I think, I think um, we're going to uh, look at some different scenarios up front and see if we can't, um, you know, sometimes, you know, there's a difference in panic and a difference in uh, really, really reviewing what we're trying to do and who's trying to do it. Um, so uh, we may shake up the offensive line a little bit. And, uh, you know, you have to practice it. So you have to see if what you think might work works in practice um i think that would be one one way uh we got to make some guys miss at running back um uh, our quarterback has to play uh consistent uh, and we've got to be able to get open if you look at it i think offensively i think a lot of it's been maybe tagged uh, on the offensive line and there's certainly problems there but um there's a lot of areas that we can get better at. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to open completely up our tight end situation and see see who who can play in there because obviously we've been a little bit of musical chairs there as well with, with the exception of Luke. Um, but you know, we've got to do a better job coaching. Um, we have to do a better job with the details. You know, that we found a positive in the penalties. You know, we cut that down, which I think hurt us and in, in with some results of winning and losing. Um, so that was one positive. Um, but you know, we all have to play better and we have to uh, get some explosive plays. You know, obviously, though unfortunate, we could have tied the game up. You know, they're uh, – we just – those plays we need, and uh, um, I think our team uh, – I'll, I'll have a better feel of them this afternoon, but I've talked to a lot of the kids today, and, and uh, you know, Trey, we went – we lost three in a row two years ago and bounced back pretty good, and and uh, I think we will again, uh, but I don't know that we can continue to do the same things and say, well, we're just going to get better at them, I think. I think we've got to shuffle up, uh, shuffle some things up to uh, maybe ignite a spark into us a little bit. Because I do think we've got good players uh, and we just got to play better and coach better. Just on those points, I mean, we Dominic Johnson's worked a little tight end. I don't know if that's maybe something you mean, but we know Kudus has played some center. Yeah. Lemmer can play guard. Lathan can play tackle. Are those some of the things that you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think you hit most of them. Um, uh, exactly what we're doing. You know, I think lost in this a little bit. Uh, you know, I've been uh, fairly pleased with our defense, you know. Um, uh, you know, three turnovers, things of that nature. So, um, uh, but uh, offensive, I think you hit on some of the moves that we're going to look at. Yeah, Coach, I was wondering, with, with guys like Kudis and Chambly and Manuel specifically, what are things that maybe could happen for them to kind of speed the game up a little bit or, or even slow it down for them? Yeah, they, 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 you're right. On the second half of that, it's got to slow down somehow for them. A lot of times that's just playing experience. Uh, um, obviously, you're going to make a, a few more mistakes uh, technique-wise as well uh, when you're younger. Um, but – um, I think we have um, the guys, the five best. I don't know that we have them in a, the correct position. We may, but I think we're going to look at some of that changing to maybe help them, maybe simplify it, maybe put them by an older guy that can, you know, help them, communicate with them, things of that nature. Um, obviously, in the first five games, we thought we had them exactly where – ball camp, spring ball combination would be. What happened a little bit with Dev is he didn't practice basically for three or four weeks. He got behind uh, uh, mentally. And uh, so he's got to catch up. The only way I know how to do that is he's got to rep that. We can't move him. He's he's behind mentally, so we have to keep him in that, sp in that spot to me. 
Um, but some of the other guys uh, with some veterans around them, I think will help them. Um, but to answer your question, I don't know how you speed that up without without practice and playing. It's it's hard to become a sophomore when you're still a freshman, you know, but I think it's just experience. And they got to do something well. And I think any confidence, then that helps them do something again well. And then I know you were asked about Varquez Gomes after the game, but I'm curious with him specifically, what is it that maybe has been – I guess, causing him to not play as much. I know Luke has been really good, but yeah. I feel like, you know, transferred from North Texas, he, his film was great. What, what do you want to see more from him? Yeah, his film was good, um, and he's a good player. Um, the physicality part of it, um, um, again, his um, ability to make plays, uh, he has it. He just has to make them. Um, a lot of his – to be honest with you, a lot of his non-playing was because of Luke, uh, because they were very similar in uh, blocking, but route running as far as, you know, where their um, assets were. Um, so I think you'll see a, a good player from him. I do. Uh, just one that wasn't able to get on the field quite as much because Luke was ahead of him. I just watching the second half of LSU Ole Miss. It looks like Ole Miss attacks you. Inside, they've tacked the edges on you. What can you speak to maybe what you see out of their offense? Oh, man. Well, Dart's really good. I mean, really good. Uh, those two running backs are, I think they're as good as anybody has, both of them. I mean, they're good. Uh, Judkins is really special. Uh, the transfer from SMU, 24 is really good. Uh, kickoff returner as well. Um, their line, you know, they got three veterans center over right, and then they they went in transfer portal and got a couple of good players on the offensive line. <clears throat> but, you know, I think I think coach he runs the ball quite a little bit, you know, and I would too if I had had those, you know, if, if I had them running backs, you know, like we're trying to do. Um, but you see. A lot of explosives. To, for us to win, we're going to have to cut those explosive plays out. And that that's four going up the middle of the field as well. Uh, but they basically run four running plays, it basically is what it is. And off of that, they have either RPO or read from the quarterback. Um, and darts a lot faster than I want him to be. Uh, but they've got playmakers everywhere. they got, I think, three receivers over – 300 yards catching and uh, uh, just really uh, scary. I mean, they're explosive. Uh, I think we'll have a good game plan as, as, uh, as always, but, um, and their tight ends a good player. He, I don't think he played maybe week, maybe two and three, but he's back now and, and he's a good player. And this as a fan, uh, this series has been wild. It's been a lot of fun game. Yeah. What do you think of when you think of, hey, we're about to play Ole Miss, just kind of generally? Well, I think the first thing you think is offense, you know. Um, we got to score a lot of points, you know, to stay in the game. Um, you think of Lane Kiffin and what a – I don't know the word mastermind, whatever. I mean, he's as good as play caller as there is in the game. And um, – so you think of those two things, you know, Pete uh, Golding has done a great job with their defense They're there. I know that, you know, obviously they gave up some points uh, Saturday night. What a, I guess that's why people like college football or games like that. It was incredible. Um, but they are much better up front than they have been on defense. And now they're knocking the hell out of you from the back end. Uh, but when you think of the series, it's been a fun series. Uh, and, you know, we've had some success in the series since I've been here. Uh, obviously, we got bowl eligible last year uh, playing Ole Miss. So, I have a lot of respect for them uh, playing over there at night. We did not the last time I was here when we lost by one. Or the last time we went over there was a morning game, if, I, if I'm correct. Um, but – I think of, I think 
it's going to be a, one hell of a game for the fans to watch, and and uh, and uh, we're we're excited to go over there. But you think about the offense and all the points and all the playmakers they have. You mentioned earlier that you were happy with the defense for now. Uh, what is kind of the DC's done well in their first year here? Um, well, they get they're getting to play sound football and hard football. Um, we're we're giving less and less explosives. Um, uh, we're we're where we're supposed to be. Uh, I think our guys are really taken to. Um, to the fellas and I believe in them and things of that nature. And, and, uh, I just think they're playing hard and they're playing sound football. And, and, uh, we have a few more players depth wise than what we had last year, allowing us to do that. I think. Coach, you mentioned uh, one more offensive line question. Uh, you mentioned shuffling things up. You've got some youth on the offensive line. I know you're the head coach, have to worry about the whole team, but given your background, how how much of a hands-on approach do you take with that unit? Um, on the field, um, not a tremendous amount on the field. Off the field, you know, we've got a great offensive line coach, the same one, that, you know, we led the Power Five in rushing two years ago and – yeah, same one that everybody tries to get it when the season's over with. So, um, off the field, I have a lot of of uh, uh, what's the word uh, input? Uh, not input. I, you know, it's not counseling either. It's uh, off the field. I have several questions about what we're doing, how we're doing it, this, that, and other. Uh, I want to be conscious that I didn't want to overstep anybody's boundary as the offensive line coach and uh, because we've got a really good one he'll get it fixed um, uh, as as good as anybody can so but to answer your question not a whole lot on the field and then with with rocket how close was he to 100 percent on on saturday and how has he maybe bounced back the last couple of days yeah i don't i don't i don't think he was 100 percent. it'd be hard for me to think you know, he'd be out for three games and then, you know, be able to come in there and just I, – I do think he brought a spark to the team as far as being back and all those type things. But I think if you watch the game, I, I, I don't think you would think that he was at 100%. Um, um, still got a little fluid there, but he'll obviously be better this week than he was last week. And, and uh, uh, but, I, you know, he went out there and played hard and all those things, but I, I don't think he was – uh, the the old rocket yeah but I think you certainly will get there and you have any updates on maybe Nudie uh, Morgan uh, I don't think Jashad Stewart traveled either you have some updates on those guys yeah Stu's Stu's got a growing issue uh, so I don't know if he'll be back or not uh, Nudie uh, there's a possibility but um, I don't think he'll practice today and he said somebody else. John, you know, that's great news. I mean, John uh, talked to him Saturday night uh, when we got back. Uh, he was in great spirits. Um, uh, he had another test this afternoon uh, that I haven't heard the results of that yet, but or is having one this afternoon uh, that the results that way well, hadn't had the test. So how could you get the results? And then, uh, but he's in, he's in uh, great spirits. Uh, honestly, I think he got hit right here and like a punch, you know, and, uh, but I think he's, I would think that he would have an opportunity to play this week. Um, Sam, I, you know, Dart, I always say everybody thinks about him as a passer, but he ran for 50 yards. I don't know if you saw this play, but he like hurdled yeah. over a guy and I'm thinking, man, I don't know my quarterback doing that. And I, I don't know what you think about his running and he did that. And then Isaiah, He's obviously, you know, literally is a hurdler in track. What would you think of that move he did? Yeah. Or would you rather not have a guy do that, maybe put himself in a bad spot to get hit, you yeah. know, in the wrong spot? Well, Dart, like I said before, he's fast, you know. And, and uh, you know, Ole Miss, it looked like they're having fun, you know, and he's jumping over people. And, these, and to answer your question, I've seen every play they've 
had this year off his defense and special team. So I've seen him. Uh, that's why I look a little tired. But um, uh, yeah, he's the thing about him is he, you know, he, he's a great passer, but he's just fast and athletic. Isaiah's, you know, and you, if I would have, could have, should have. He lands on his feet. He just lands on his feet without the ball. His knee actually knocked the ball out of his hand. If he's if he lands if he has the ball in his hand, he may still be running. You know, so um, I really like what he's brought to us. I know he had a, a little bit of ball issue on Saturday, but we're not gonna give up on him. I, th I think he brings a lot to us, and and. Uh, um, I really like his athleticism. He he's one of them guys that wants to do that. You know what I mean. And you got to find a guy that really wants to do that. And like Smith, uh, you know, like he does at A and M. Um, so. And then you know, uh, Alabama. You know, Ole Miss only scored ten against Alabama, and a lot of that has to do with Alabama where they're playing and all that. But it seemed like Kevin took a lot of heat. And the next week they come back and they just you know yeah. fifty five. And you just mentioned you saw the place. What do you see that was different? Obviously, different opponents. What do you see that was maybe different from them, from the Alabama the, to the LSU game? Well, I think schematically as well. I think schematically there was two different schemes ran, two two different coverages, things of that nature. Um, Alabama's front four, uh, their two ends had put quite a little bit of pressure and and. Uh, you know, they, they couldn't run the ball quite as well as they did against LSU. LSU, um, you know, they had success. It's hard to stop somebody if you're, they're having success both in the run and the pass. You know, you got to make them one-dimensional. And uh, I think Alabama had maybe had an opportunity to do that a little bit more. You know, they, they – but here's the bottom line. They, they missed some plays against Alabama or that game could have been different too because they had some guys and they just, you know, things they hit against LSU, they just missed against Alabama. But but Alabama, you know, they've been playing that defense for a long time and, and they've got big physical guys. And uh, I just think the difference was is they weren't able to run the ball quite as well as they did against LSU and, and uh, and then you know they they didn't quite hold up as well against Alabama's front four as they did against LSU, which allowed um, Daniels up, 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 excuse me, which allowed Dart opportunities to make some plays. Coach, on the uh, tight end point, do you foresee on Saturday, do you see Gums getting the majority of reps with the ones? Do you see it sort of being a by-committee sort of situation? How how do you see that going? Yeah, I think what we're going to do, that's a good question. I think what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to play uh, two of them with the first group, and two of them with the second group. We're going to let them battle it out and figure out who it is on, on Saturday. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't think there's any of them that have – have really excelled over the other guy or anything like that. You have two different types of guys. You know, you have Washington and Gums, and then you have Bax and Francis. You know, they're two – they're kind of over here and they're kind of over here, so we're just going to let them battle it out this week and get them all the equal amount of reps and see see who we're going to throw out there on first. Obviously, it's impossible to completely replace Luke's production, but you did talk in the offseason about how deep this group is, a yeah. couple of transfers. What have you seen from the group as a whole that gives you confidence that at least it'll be an asset for KJ moving forward? Yeah, and, and I think, I think, you know, you look at Gums and Tyrus, those guys are – Luke has his type, typish, you know, if if uh, if you go that direction. Um, so one of those two guys, and I believe – I believe that they can. I mean, I mean, I don't – obviously, Luke was a first-team guy, so we felt like he was the best tight end that we had. Uh, but I, I do think our depth is better than what it was a year ago, and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly find out, I guess, Saturday. But I, I feel confident in the group. Sam, you, you talked in the preseason about K.J. being a leader of the team, not just the offense. I'm just curious how you've seen him kind of respond. Um to the adversity the last few weeks, just how's he interacting with guys behind the scenes? He's been great. Um, you know, KJ's been here before. I remember 
I don't think he'll mind me sharing. Um, it was after the LSU game, and I was just talking about we got to stay together. we got to get better. Um, uh, and when I got through, he said, Coach, we've been here before. And it made me feel good, like we've lost two games in a row before and we've come back. And and he said it in front of the team. So uh, our team, our team, I think, is resilient. I believe they are. And, and uh, we'll find out as the weeks keep going. But we've got a lot of football left. And be honest with you, we need one. We need to, we need to get one, and then that'll that'll help us into something else. But we we need to find a win, and uh, obviously we're going to try like hell on Saturday. I'm looking at the schematics versus physicality on the offensive push. Yeah. What do you think the mix is on what you might have to change schematically versus how much more physical you might need to be? Well, I think um, physicality. Uh, it's something that we certainly have to and we have been addressing um, schematics I think you can stay with your base run package but you've got to have something uh, that when you call it that you think you can get a touchdown you can get 20 you can get you know something off of maybe a similar look that comes off of it um a little bit more LSU-ish that we tried to do some things there. Um, but I think, you know, obviously we're still running stretch and we ran it well for, you know, three years in a row. And sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. I went back and looked at last year's game and in that game, sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. But when we did, we went 50. You know, we went 30. We went, I mean, we went. And uh, for whatever reason, whether we're not straining hard enough, not getting on second level, whatever, we're not having those plays. You know, A.J. did, I think, against BYU. You know, and other than that, we're just, we're not doing it. So it's got to either be the strain, the physicality, or uh, the position that the kids are playing. So we're going we're gonna to move it around a little bit. And then uh, Scotty asked you about Tesla the other night, uh, maybe five targets. Yeah. Um, is a separation thing an issue or is he getting – I'll tell you. I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, guys, a couple things. Let me answer the question and I'll tell you a couple things. One, um, if your quarterback doesn't have time to throw it, that's going to affect all your numbers as your receivers whether you got Traylon Burks out there or whether you don't, if, if you if you're nervous or you're having to do too much in the pocket, you're not gonna be able to get the ball to Burks. You know what I mean? We have had that conversation about Tesla because um, we moved into slot. And my question was, is it, did that hurt his production? And then I go back and I look at it. I, I don't think so. I think more what's hurting those guys is just time to get the ball to him. Because uh, I think he's still getting open. It's just, oh, you should throw that. Well, that's easy to say unless you got five 300-pounders coming, you know, getting close to you. Um, oh, and the other thing I was going to say, too, is, you know, when we go in after a game and we – don't be nervous. When we go in after a game, I want you to know something, that I'm trying to answer your questions. But where I I don't see it, like, in other words, I haven't had the replay of it. I see it one time. And I'm on the field, so I'm looking way over. I, sometimes I don't see it. You know, they say the old coach speak, you know, uh, he coaches and coach speak. I think that came because you don't want to seem like a dummy and say, well, I didn't see it. You know, but you go, oh, well, you know, so you make up something, you know what I mean? And so sometimes when we come in after a game, it's hard to answer all the questions because some of it I just don't know. And maybe I just say, I don't know. I didn't see it, you know, but y'all get a chance to see it on replay. You know what I'm saying? 
And that, I don't know why I said that, but I did. Sam, on the the two long punt returns by A&M, yeah. uh, Fletcher punted it 60-plus yards. Yeah. Uh, was that more – with those, do you have to, like, have him dial it back a little bit, <laughs> or do you need to tell the coverage units to get down there faster? Like, what's the balance there? Another good conversation that we had and we have had. And it didn't hurt us until that night. He boom, he was boom-booming to a really good punt returner. And we knew it. Uh, first of all, we thought that we could win at the Gunners and be – close now not five yards not two yards close we knew we was, we was going to have a 10 yard cushion but we did feel comfortable that we could get him on the ground um i think there's twofold you tell max to kick it out of bounds or you tell him to take something off we've all seen taking something off don't work it, that's not his deal so i went back and just said hey mac kick the damn thing as far as you can kick it we'll cover it you know put it in the zone don't put it in the middle of the field things of that nature and it stung us you know the other night uh we are going to look into if we feel like we've got a dangerous guy back there looking at looking to kick it out of bounds but then you also have that problem with taking something off of it, kicking it out of bounds, is out of bounds. What's well, out of bounds is at 12 yards, you know, things of that nature. So um, we've got to really work on that and see if we can get consistent with, you know, because before we're just now getting consistent punting it, you know what I mean, and doing a really good job. So there's a little bit of, of that going on. I know Saturday was obviously no time to celebrate, but if KJ did set two career records. Is that just one of your thoughts on that? And is that something maybe today you acknowledge that in front of the team, or do you just move on like hey, that was a crappy game? Or how do you do? How, how do you well, approach that? Probably not. Nor do I. But that's not. You know, things have changed a little bit about social media because all the kids know it. You know, if they if they're on any type of they already know it you know what i mean and that was saturday and now it's monday and um you know i'm really weird about awards and all that kind of stuff records all that you know obviously if i would have uh, if we'd have won or something like that or you know what i mean in the locker room or something that would have been a really special moment but i had forgot all about it to be honest with you um but it's really a great you got to stay healthy for a long period of time, and you got to be a good player to set any type of record. And I'm real happy for him, and I hope he puts it so far out there that the next guy's got a long way to go to catch it. But I'm really happy for him. Coach, you've mentioned explosive plays a couple times, both in Ole Miss's ability to make them and your defense's growing ability to stop them. Are you confident with where your defense is at to be able to limit those big plays coming up on Saturday? Yes, I am against a really good offensive team. And, and that may be limited to five, might be limited to three. It may be uh, – they're going to get some. I mean, you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. You know what I mean. But it can't be 10. It can't be 12. It can't be – I mean, can't let them get behind us, you know. LSU obviously did, you know. And uh, – uh, if we, I, yes, to answer your question, I'm very com I'm confident in our defense, and and I think they're um, making huge strides uh, as the season goes on. You know, maybe Lane has revolutionized uh, blending coaching with social media He's great awareness. At it. What do you just your take on that? He's great at it. You know, I look at Coach Kiffin in that as he just doesn't care. I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for the man. But I mean, if he somebody says something to him, he'll he'll come right back on. I bet it don't bother him an ounce. If uh, he wants to make a joke on there about something, I think he's he's special. I mean, he has a special gift there that I don't think it bothers him, and it might. I don't, I don't want to speak for him, uh, but uh, Mike Leach. He had a special gift of after the game. Whether he won or lost, 
I mean, he he was like, well, we prepared. I don't know what he was inside, but it was like, well, we prepared. We did the best we could. And that government, Sam, you, we missed a field goal. Now I'm going to go on social media and say it's open tryouts. You know what I mean? And And he just had a gift. And I would watch him when I watched TV coming off and after losses, I mean, he'd be so nice, you know, and I mean, we're all nice, but you know what I mean? Like genuine, uh, proud, happy for you, all this, we got to play better, whatever it might be. To me, Lane's got that same ability with social media. And instead of fighting it, he just goes with it. And, and, you know, obviously I wish I had that ability. Um, I don't. And, uh, but I, I respect how he handles all that. And, and you know, he takes some jabs and things of that nature. And I think it's all in good nature, though. You have it with us. Um, you have that ability with us. Thank uh, you. KJ, obviously, two years ago, he went back and he had a hell of a game. Um, just maybe, Man. do you think this kind of means something to him being that close? <laughs> well, I'm sure it does. I mean, you know. I think everybody in life needs a little bit of motivation, you know, to, to get to whatever you need to get. Um, but I think this is, a, you know, obviously a big deal going back. Last time we are done, we just didn't quite get it done. But it sure wasn't because of him. I, I, if I look back in my – well, I'm going on four now. In my four years, there's a couple games stick out. One was Missouri, his very first time. We lost. And then the next one was Ole Miss. We lost that one too. But it wasn't wasn't because of KJ. You know, it was he was outstanding. And uh we'll get we'll get rolling. I, I believe in this team and and I believe in our coaching staff and I'm really excited to get over to Ole Miss, see what happens Saturday night.